Almost ready. It feels like I'm forgetting something. All right, guys, welcome to the stream. My audio should be clean now. Um, hopefully it's in sync because I didn't manage to fix that part of it. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's all good, hopefully. Look in sync. Yeah, well, there's a, I, I added a 66 millisecond delay, I think. Let me check. It doesn't want to. Oh, great. <laughs> OBS doesn't want me to click on anything today. Oh, no. It crashed on me earlier. As soon as I hit go live, it crashed. So, um, 66. It's a specific number. Why was that? Um, so 30 FPS and I was thinking, okay, it's two frames and I just guessed 60, but that's probably not correct. Welcome everyone. Welcome Will, Davi, Ranajoy, uh, Viral Beats, uh, IR Max family, uh, and anyone else that is watching but not in the chat. So it's a, a Reaper update week. Um, pretty good stuff in that update and uh yeah i wanted to explore some things further especially the uh the masked tri uh fixed item lanes mode it's kind of weird i was thinking like what if you drop in a drum loop and then on the lane below you add in additional samples and that will subtract the original let's say kick drum or snare drum as you add in those samples and it's automatically switching and that would save having to split on every cut or on every hit um yeah i don't know john looking fresh as ever no i feel not great <laughs> this week uh yeah the uh the burnout turned into just straight depression but I'm glad I got a video done at least this week. Um, it was kind of unexpected, not unexpected, but like it's not the thing I had planned for this week. I started the week with um, with uh, getting a bit of my taxes done, um, just getting any small part of that started. And uh, then, um, yeah, not not getting enough of that done. And then there was two videos I was trying to work on, one of, and just neither of them are working out. Lack of sleep is definitely an issue. I tried to get uh, to bed earlier. Let's say, uh, what day was yesterday? Yesterday was Thursday. So Wednesday night, I actually got to bed at a decent time. And then like right at midnight, I was wide awake. And I got up and I started just scripting a video and then slept on the couch for the rest of the night and just had an awful sleep and so i think you can tell in the video like how tired i am and i was making a ton of mistakes in that video as well so the recording was about 30 minutes and then it ended up being 18 minutes after editing 
And there's some things that I just... Yeah. Coffee helps for sure. Uh, Jeremy. How's it going? Um, there was a... Uh, I don't know if I can do the thing. Uh, there was an alert earlier today when I opened OBS for um, some of the... Uh, the re membership re I don't know what do you call it I want to say resub but it's it's not exactly that um just a sec Um, so I'm gonna, yeah, I'll just play a couple of these, uh, yeah, there you go. It's one of the things you pay for, seeing, seeing it up on screen. All right, so, uh, yeah, how's everyone doing? I didn't see, uh, Jason here today. He's probably busy. I know he's working with, uh, UVI on their latest thing. Uh, did a, a demo. Demo song, I think, for their, their new thing. Um. Oh, yeah, what else? Uh, two weeks ago, or, yeah, my kids had their spring break, and they were... Well, one of them's an energy vampire, so it was just, like, hard to get anything done. I just didn't even try a lot of the time. Um, and, yeah, so, like, I needed a couple days after that to even, like, sort of feel back to normal. I feel pretty good today, I would say. But um, Monday also, also started doing intermittent fasting again and doing workouts again. And that, that like, <laughs> that was a bit rough couldn't walk like Tuesday because I started my workout again but I'm glad I did it I I am the, I enjoy the benefits um, you know once you get the ball ro rolling on that uh, going back to the video recording um, I was having like as soon as I recorded that video and started to edit it I noticed that there was a bunch of like um, background noise. So, uh, these are sort of like low quality waveforms, but you can kind of see here, like there's this, there's this high frequency stuff. So this is like five kilohertz, eight kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, uh, 15, 16 and 20 K. Um, just like all over my recordings. And I went back to older recordings, all the way back to February, I think it was, and uh, and it's been the last at least probably five videos, and I've been just kind of dealing with it with EQ. Um, oh, you can probably see this in the EQ. These high frequencies are are really weird. Um. And it's just sort of like this, like, whistling sound when I'm talking, along with the background noise. And it's just, I couldn't figure out what it was. It ended up being a cable, and I think it, I, I was using that cable before that, but I think uh, moving my audio interface off the table and under into the drawer, that required me running uh, XLR cable over some uh, USB cables and... Um, probably HDMI and and power cables and harmonics got in so 
Jason's here. Turbo Knight's here. Hello. Uh, motivational train. Hello. Um, have I found a practical benefit from spectral peaks? Yes, I find it much easier to uh, to edit dialogue, especially with that. Um, things like S's uh, are teal on my waveforms, and it, it makes it very easy to see. Um, yeah, I find it spectral peaks very helpful. Spectrogram peaks, not so much, other than for detecting things like these ringing frequencies. And actually doing the spectral edits, very rarely is it um, actually helpful. Um, this right here is a sort of the low quality spectral peak because this is a lossy file. But if I converted this to wave, you would let's just do a glue on this. Never remember my glue action. Uh, I guess it's about the same. Um, but yeah, this is... That's, most of the time with the spectral editing, it, you're almost better off using an EQ, for for especially with something like this. So if I open up my uh, my actual edit here, um, if I go to the EQ on this. Like, this is a very unnatural EQ for me. I never have to do with this. So these... I never have to roll off the highs and these three notches shouldn't be there. So... Yeah. Kind of annoying. And it it, it just, like, threw off the, the workflow for the day. The an, A video like this shouldn't take me all day. But I, I spent, like, two hours troubleshooting... Um, I, I really wasn't expecting that it to be the cable because it seemed to be only in OBS that I was getting the issue and I could record into Reaper cleanly. But I think if I just increased the gain further, I would have seen the issues. Anyways, yeah, it's just really weird and it threw off the whole day. Um, so like, I was editing as much as I could and then I had to go get my son from school and then... I think I needed to sleep after that uh, and then make dinner and then just I didn't end up publishing it until like 7 p.m. or something like that. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it seems like people liked the video in the end. It's not, you know, it doesn't stand out as a, a great creative work from me or anything like that, but it's essential information for people. So, happy to help. All right, so um, I did see some questions here. Um, yeah, practical benefit from Spectral Peaks. Definitely that it makes visualizing the audio and the different sorts of sounds, especially with speech, um, easier to edit. Um, with things like drums, you don't tend to really see any, uh, visual, like, the color differences, unless it's a very tonal drum. So often, like, a snare drum is just going to be gray, because it's all sort of white noise. Um, and, uh, although sometimes you see, like, in toms, you might see different colors. Um, for guitars, it helps to show the, uh, where the chords are chord changes are because the color actually changes um which and so that gives you kind of a, a quick target of for making a split it's like right at the color change but yeah um in like a mastering scenario i would say the color the spectral peaks don't help that much but spectrogram peaks might help uh yeah I'm going to have to set my phone to do not disturb. Okay. Um, a 
have a bit I have a big issue with time aligning videos. Works delaying the video in preferences, but doesn't translate to the final render. Um, yeah, that's weird. I I think I I actually never use the the preference for uh, delaying video. Um, where is that video? I always set this to zero. Um, because I don't notice, like, a a, uh, a delay or anything like that that I can measure. But when I import a video, so let's say this recording. So this is my original recording from OBS. I'll drop that in. And if I set my grid to 30 FPS... I think my clap is actually at the end. Anyways, the the main thing that I want to show you here is that the Where's my Ah, I lost it. There it is. Once I do the recording, I always split the audio out of it. I use a FFmpeg script for that. And so if I put in my audio here, if they're lined up at the start, they may not actually be lined up in the waveform. This is pretty close. Well, actually, I should say, like, these waveforms are accurate to each other. But this may not actually be in sync with the video by a, a few frames. I know that I clapped at the end, not at the beginning. I usually remember to clap at the beginning, but I don't always. So, so I have my sync point here at the end. I go frame by frame. You can see where my hands come together. Right? Right there. So that's my sync point and my edit cursor is a few frames away from the actual clap. So if I keep my edit cursor parked here and I alt drag to line this up like that, that was like four or five frames late. Um, and then with the, the audio from the uh, like Reaper's capture, if I line that up, that doesn't always line up the same. Usually I uh, will sync it up with um, playback. Uh, so like I'll, I'll, I'll actually look at where the play, um, the transport play button turns green. Or when I see things on the meters. That's where I usually line that up. Yeah. Never assume that your camera is capturing the audio perfectly in sync with your video. Always do a clap or use one of these things. Use one of these things for uh, syncing your audio because it's always, uh, every camera is going to be a few frames off either direction. And uh, yeah, there's no real like good automatic way to do it. But that's what you should be doing. Separate wave files for your audio, um, separate from your video files. And your video files, you should be going into source properties and then set the audio to disable audio. It's gonna run a bit better. And then you can just focus purely on video effects on this track or on this item and audio effects on the other tracks. Hope that makes sense should run better that way as well. Intermittent fasting last five months and I love it. Yeah, um, I did it in, I think it was 2019 I started with it. And I did it until this year, uh, October or something, as of when I stopped, tried eating breakfast and stuff. Um, pretty much kept with the like 7 p.m. no eating thing after that, but um, I could really tell that 
uh, that sort of structure worked better for me. I don't know. I, I, for the past couple months, I've been off and on. And I prefer when I'm doing the inter intermittent fasting. Uh, but also, if I'm tracking calories, it means, like, my first meal has to be, like, at least 800 calories. And otherwise, I'm, like, I'm... I'm not focused on work. I have to like keep getting up and snacking every couple minutes. I, it's very distracting. But I have to like spend half an hour at least cooking and then eating like a huge meal in the middle of the day or you know, I'm just I'm going to be like only eating 800 calories for the whole day. And I can really tell the difference. So if you're doing the intermittent fasting already, try adding also the um, counting calories. Um, I use the an app called Chronometer. I'm not currently using it, um, but it's pretty good. Um, so, uh, I mean. I'd, I'd have to go back, like, months. But this was helpful for me. It automatically gets my my Apple Watch uh, or Apple health data, stuff like that. So it knows, like, how much activity I've got and um, and the BMI. Is it BMI? Basal, you know, the amount of calories that you burn just being alive, not counting exercise and things like that. Um, but on the other hand, that's also made me sometimes feel like I need to overeat to like use all of my calories aloud. And I and sometimes I snack because of the app rather than just being hungry. It's a little weird. But yeah, I think intermittent fasting is a good just sort of to have the structure and kind of the rules and not eating like a whole bag of chips or five or six chocolate bars right before bed, you know, <laughs> like terrible decisions it it's uh it was helpful for me and i definitely lost weight as soon as i started doing it um yeah turbo knight you're saying same thing as me for the vocal editing seeing the s's they, they just jump out so easily um with spectral peaks enabled Hey, audio sound doctor. Welcome. Did the music stop? I skipped a song. Music's probably pretty quiet for you guys anyways. Uh... Turbo Knight says, there's only one thing in Reaper I need. It's complete lock for items. I need you to make it happen. I don't know if I can. Uh, you work with video quite a bit, and moving regions always breaks the video. Yeah, that's that's sometimes an issue. Um, I don't really have a solution for that. Um, I thought there was something. I think there was an an option for uh, ripple and locking, but that's not region moving. Um, so. Locked item ripple editing behavior, unaffected by ripple, interrupts ripple. Maybe instead of moving regions, you do it this way. Or, um, what's the word? Uh, razor edits uh, for all tracks, and then you unselect the video track. That may, um, that may work. 
or hide the video track and then make a all track selection with razor edit uh, for that time selection or time range that might be a way around it but definitely dragging regions is going to like split everything and and rearrange everything uh, i think i'm trying to think of what i do or or a situation where i would have to move a region where i don't also want to move the video like there's there's often in a in a tutorial video where I will rearrange the order so it's not always chronological sometimes you know it, in an update video I might take something that's based uh, you know just two things that were recorded alphabetically because of the change log but then I ended up moving them over but and I'll use re regions to move them but I do want to keep the video with the audio so then it makes sense but for like uh I don't know, music video or something like that. It makes sense to be able to move things around with regions, but keep your video track locked. I don't really have a, a good solution other than don't use regions. If you can use razor edits instead of regions, um, that's probably the best way. Or um, what's that other thing? Uh, folder, folder items, I think it's called. Um, from NVK. That would probably work. When will Reaper fix plugins losing focus? I don't really know what you mean. Um, usually people are complaining about plugins stealing focus. Um, plugins losing focus. I don't really know what you mean. Fallen letters. Welcome. Love your Reaper tutorials. As a band, we're actually planning to use Reaper live with VSTs and patch automation. Any backup select uh, suggestions? Um... Yeah, I think in a previous stream, we were talking about, um, talking about using Reaper Live, uh, because there was a bunch of bands that were, like, losing their entire, um, thank you, Davi, uh, losing their entire live set, and they couldn't play because of a lost laptop uh, at the airport or something goes down, uh, for some reason they can't do it and if you have your reaper session um on a usb stick and every person in the band has a copy of that then it's not you know down to the single laptop that matters you could go into the apple store get the base model uh macbook air or uh mac mini get like a monitor off Craigslist or something like that. If you you know if you wanted to go that route, um, and then just plug in the USB stick, download the latest version of Reaper, and you're basically good to go again. So losing the sessions is really not something that should ever happen. You should have um, you know probably like the bare minimum like stems that you need all your click tracks and stuff and that's going to be a pretty small file size that will fit on any like usb key um and they're cheap enough that everyone can have them or or on, on an sd card and also have it in your dropbox or in your iCloud or or whatever cloud service like making copies of that stuff it's important um it shouldn't be too complicated but it should definitely be in at least three places uh yeah, I, I can't really think of any, I mean, I could go on and on about all the details of it, but like, for me, it doesn't make any sense for a band to like, lose everything and not be able to play just because they lose their laptop. Like, you should have the sessions backed up in multiple places. You should be able to have a system that doesn't rely on a specific computer, right? You can just buy or borrow any laptop 
plug in your USB thing and your sessions will run. That's what it should be like. Or maybe there's details that I'm not seeing because I'm not on tour, but that's what I would suggest. Davi, did you time that or like, did you resub early or was that automatic just happened to be, you know, a couple Fridays ago, you set that up. Is there a way I can map Reapers retune onto a floor pedal UI, uh, with a switch? I would, I would not recommend using retune on stage. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Polytune Mini. Uh, these are pretty cheap. Um, there's the full-size one. There's the Korg. I think it's called Pitch Black or something like that. Also a very good pedal. I wouldn't use Reaper for Guitar Tuner. Your project folder is 402 gigabytes. Right, but your live set probably isn't that big. <laughs> you actually release music on a regular basis, so it's, it's understandable. For me, having that much doesn't make any sense. Um, I stopped doing physical backups here. Um, and I use Backblaze instead because yearly it's, you know, it's about the same price as buying a whole new hard drive. Live sets are like 300 megabytes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, if you can afford it, if you can base your system around Mac minis. Um, M1 Mac minis are pretty affordable, powerful. Um, and if you could just have two of them and, uh, you know, if you're flying, have, have, uh, different people carry them on something like that. So that one doesn't get, uh, if one gets stolen, you don't lose everything, that kind of thing. But I don't know. There's there's other ways of going about it. Uh, my my live sets were never more complicated than um, yeah. You know, my band after high school, before college, we we actually had a DVD player for our backing tracks. Uh, we had to find we had to go through a bunch of different DVD players before we could find one that had instant playback if you paused. Um, or switch to the next track. Uh, and then we had a, a laptop with FL Studio. And then I had my guitar pedals and stuff. So it was... <laughs> and our PA system was a, a home stereo. It was pretty lo-fi. Um, but yeah, it, now it's it's just so much easier. I kind of wish I had some recordings of that stuff was I don't even know I don't know it was very lo-fi lo-fi is the trend now yeah we we want our our second gig that we ever played was for some charity thing and it ended up being like in a shed and there was no power so like we got a generator it was just an awful thing it's goofy thinking about it now but oh yeah um yeah I, I i wish i could remember what what that band was even called i can't remember my first band was called terminal diarrhea and mostly we played like new metal cover songs we didn't have any original music and then after that 
I was in a band called Serenity and a Thousand Screams. And again, we did play a lot of new metal songs. We played some Marilyn Manson songs. Um, I think we played some Mudvayne songs. Um, what else? But we did have some original songs. We had some horrible experiences with, with recording, which ended up getting me to learn recording in recording school. But um, yeah, I had another band after that that was electronic, and I don't remember what we were called. But it, it was a, a very short-lived thing. Well, hopefully those two people bring two more friends this time. Turbo Knight. Yeah. Two people... I, I've done live streams with zero people. So two people is better than nothing. And if you can entertain them, then it's a start, right? But uh, yeah, hopefully you can get... Hopefully you have a, a much more packed show next time you're there. Uh... So let's get into doing stuff in Reaper. So yeah, this new feature for fixed item lanes and playing all and um, masking. It's interesting. People are asking why, why do it? Why, why do this instead of some other method? And I don't really know. I, I missed the conversation around it, like why uh, why use this method? Um, but let's let's try it out. I'm unplugged. Everything's unplugged. <laughs> All right, so, um, baritone. Um, let's start with pedals off for now. I just want to tune this. Oh, maybe I'll answer a question while I tune. If anyone's got a question. Okay, so do I still release music? No, I haven't in a long time. Yeah, Jeremy, you were probably there in the forum over the past couple weeks whenever this was being discussed. I was thinking the main benefit seems to be that you don't need to make it as, as many splits. Um, definitely an interesting alternative to swipe comping and if you build up songs in a way that um maybe you you sort of do a long recording and then overdub you don't need to like split and make room for things no idea if my settings are going to work for for this sort of thing Let's switch the headphones.
I still hear the music. <laughs> I still hear the music in my headphones. Let's just uh, pause it then. All right, so um, the setup right now is baritone, telecaster, octave pedal, fuzz pedal, and then um, this Brainworks Ampeg SPT. All right, so I made a mistake for sure. Oops. I made a mistake for sure. Um, so let's say I want to like punch in here. And, hmm, yeah, I, I actually, I haven't checked my settings. We'll see what this does. Oh, record enable. Didn't record enable it. So with this mode, it's not playing all. I'll go play all lanes. And it did disable the masking. But I can just do like this and then like put this here and just adjust this. Maybe there. All right, so there's a bunch of settings that I'll probably need to change to actually make this work. And I'm I'm kind of glad that I didn't take on using this in the recording context for that video because this is definitely a diversion. Uh, that would have, you know, delayed that video by hours. So let's do... Um... Add lanes in options menu, and then what else do I need? Add lanes in layers, play multiple, I think. Oh yeah, and then I also need to allow this uh, to monitor media while recording, I think. I'll just not keep that, but that this seems to be the right setting. So I can just do this. I'll say keep this one note there. And like, I'm not splitting anything. I'm just trimming the ends kind of. And if I wanted to sort of layer them, I can, I can do it like that. I can add in a fade. Okay. Looking back at the the chat now, I don't know if you're talking about what I'm doing here, but um. Uh, Brandon Joy, do you mean the instrument section of the effects browser? If you right-click on an effect, 
uh, I believe you can categorize it as an instrument. Um, I don't know. All right. Okay, so this mode seems to be more for like overdubs. Um, not for, not really for layering. Right. So in this mode, only the top the only the bottom one's going to play. Unless I like split this. I'm just splitting the bottom item and the the top item is automatically um coming be, becoming unmasked. So this is the masked area and this is the um unmasked, but th this item's not actually split. So, is it more helpful? It's it's definitely different. So, so you can sort of prototype uh, a setup like this, and then if you turn off, what would it be? Comping, no. Delete lanes that are not playing. Let's see what this does. Nothing, okay. Um... It seems like the, those new actions weren't actually added to any menus, which makes it kind of hard to find. Oh, and there was an action that I did not show, and it was like copy playing, copy playing media items to new track. And so now I've got a version of this recording without fixed item lanes and um yeah without the the edits kind of interesting let's do another Let's try this with uh, another setting. What's uh, fixed item lanes and masking on. Let's take a drum loop.
Sure, there's a thing. And I'll import this as a, uh, yeah, single loopable item. And then, let's get some one shots. Let's take, uh, I don't know. Where's my drums? There's drums. I like that. It's a bit loud, but I'll import that. Uh, is my grid still on? It was. Okay, so this is sort of like a, a drum loop style of of editing um, where you can see that I'm masking different things. And if I add a fade out, I should start to uh, play a little bit of what's underneath. I can just do that here and there. And if I mute these, kind of like this, so you can kind of, I don't know. It's just something you can do. We'll experiment with this a little bit further, but I don't, I don't know like what people were asking for originally. Sure. Let's add that in. Let's add in uh, a clave. And on a second track, we'll, we'll add in a kick. So I'll put this kick on, on one and three. And <laughs> glass. Does this make sense to do it this way at all? Probably not, but. It's right now it's like an interesting thing you can do, but should you do it? I don't know. I don't know. What was that? That's weird. Do you see this? That. Oh, maybe I'm just in the wrong time position. Yeah. Yeah, that was. That's a problem. Yeah, I don't know. That that sounds terrible. Uh Okay, so let's switch over to doing some some news maybe. Yeah. Um KVR Audio has a new what they call a studio manager and it is kind of 
referencing what's on your computer and comparing it to what's in their VST plugin database. And they can tell you if you have new plugins. So let me uh, load this up here. Have you guys tried this yet? Let me know. So it's uh, on the left. There's the list of what's installed, and the mo kind of the important section is the status section. Um, not found is just means the plugin's not in their database. Um, local, local, newer it means that on your system there's a newer version than what's in their database. And then KVR newer means that you have some plugin updates to install. Um, I could have sworn that some of these were updated. Maybe you actually need to sync. So let's scan. Scan for new or updated. Let's just scan everything. Can't take too long. And so it's just checking that right now. Sometimes it's just wrong. I'm not sure. All right, so uh, it seems that, yeah, that's updated and some failed to scan. So we'll close and I guess, uh, yeah, some of them got updated. All right, I did manually update some of them. You can also click the sync with KVR button. You should do that whenever you open this this app just to check if everything is um, is correct. Um, I did notice that as soon as I installed this and synced, um, I started getting emails for every plugin that I had, uh, uh, getting a ton of email updates. So watch out for that. You'll have to manage your, uh, your email settings for KVR Audio. Um, but yeah, it looks like I've got a lot of new plugins to install. I, this... Oh, I see. Ozone 9 is is counted as version 9 while Ozone 11. Uh, that's annoying. All the Isotope plugins are saying that there's newer stuff, but it's like, for the version that I have installed, I believe that this is the, the latest version. Anyways, maybe you'll find this helpful. There are other apps like this. There's one called Plug Info. I don't know if this is still available. Uh, for free, but this is essentially the same thing. I don't know how they got what, uh, or actually they don't, they don't uh, have a database of like what the latest versions of all of these things are, but it does show you on your system what versions are installed without having to call up each plugin individually. Um, I think this was on the App Store. I'm not really sure. And there was uninstaller. Audio plugin uninstaller. This is another one we looked at um, in a live stream before. And this one will just help you. Um, well, it'll show you the version number. And if you want to remove something, you can do that from here. Your mileage may vary on if this is actually going to work for you uh, and, and not cause any additional problems. But I found it helpful. I don't have one off the top of my head. I don't know of one that I want to remove at the moment, but um, yeah, you can remove VST audio unit, AAX plugins. Yeah. Let's get rid of this AAX plugin. Uh, I think, I mean, what's actually weird is I thought that I removed the entire avid folder. But well, maybe not. I hate. I hate having AEX plugins installed. All right. Well, so those are two plugins or or software that I've shown in the past. 
sort of in a in the same kind of style as this. This one, you are able to um, select the plugin. If you double click it, it shows you some information about that on you know the same information that you would find on the KVR Audio website. Sometimes there are download links here, um, and sometimes you will have to go to the manufacturer website. So if I hover over this, I'm not seeing a preview of where that link's going to go. But I know that a lot of them will take you to the website um, to get the actual download. But some of them, it is, you know, it's such a simple plugin and they have the actual download link right here. So that's about it for that topic. I'm trying to keep up with the chat, and I've uh, lost track of what you guys are talking about. Question from Jerome. What's the easiest way to merge two different themes, keyboard shortcuts, menus, bars, spe specifically RIA tools and RIA tooled? I don't know if there is a good way of, of doing that. Keyboard shortcuts can be exported, menus can be exported and imported, but you'll probably need some sort of intermediate text editing session to actually uh, do that. I haven't used any sort of complete overhaul uh, things, or if I have used them, I haven't stuck with them because there's so much muscle memory and custom shortcuts and things that I rely on, uh, both on my keyboard, on my mouse, on my control surface that I don't want to change. But probably have to edit text somewhere to actually make that work. I should actually check about those emails. Yeah. Um, it's always risky to show my, my emails, but, uh, I'll just show you here. So, dude, just to prove the email thing, um, up until when I deleted the emails, uh, so March 4th, I guess, is when I signed up for KVR Audio, uh, the, the beta thing that I showed. Um, these are how many emails came in from KVR Audio that I did not specifically... Um, uh, monitor. So yeah, watch out for that. If you don't want additional emails, be careful of that. Yeah, in general, I like it. But it's not perfect, and it is beta. Um, they need every company to keep their information up to date. Um, whether that's, I don't know how, what that process is. If it's like if they have to send in a press release, but you know, if a plugin is working, then I wouldn't worry about updates too often. But when it starts to crash, that's the first thing you check. Uh, Marshall, what do you mean by auto solo?
Solo toggle. Um, well, I can show you what I use for that. All right. So I use Shift S. Um, and so whatever track I'm on, I tend to like set up um, functions that belong to the tracks I use with Shift. So Shift M for mute and Shift S for solo. And I've got it as a um, exclusive solo. The actual action though is Me Too Beats toggle exclusive solo for selected tracks. And my uh, and I have this set as a global action, meaning that even if there's other windows up, um, it will still do that for me. Um, I think even if the, if the MIDI editor is open as well. And then my shift M is just track mute unmute. I don't want an exclusive mute. That doesn't make sense. Uh, but I can make a selection across multiple tracks. Uh, no, if I select multiple, that shortcut still works for that. But otherwise it just kind of does like the last selected. I really like that. I use variations of that a lot. Um, otherwise, the... It's a... Uh, what is that? Shift, Command, click? Yeah. Shift, Command, click on the solo button. We'll do it. Um, let's see what else is on my list here. Oh yeah, uh, Baby Audio updated their their BA one synth, and they also included um, the effects from that. So I would like to uh, I'd like to try that out. So if you haven't seen that, I did a um, did a video about it. What was it called? Yeah, BA1. I don't have any keyboards plugged in at the moment. I'll see if it works. Right. So BA1. Let's mute this. So they made a plugin of just the effects section from this plug uh, the, from the synth, which is pretty neat. So put that aside for now. Let's put in I don't know XO and yeah, let's get. I've always liked that one. Let's use that and get the uh, render. And let's do MIDI. I'll put that there. And in addition to that, I will take off the the effects. No, there's still effects. Oh, maybe it's the snare. Let's uh yeah, a tighter snap. No reverb, essentially. And let's get the effects. Uh baby audio, what is it called? 
BA1 effects strip. I honestly haven't looked at this at all yet, but uh, I assume it's pretty easy to use. So let's loop this section and play around with this. Again, it's resizable. Wait, why is it playing twice? Oh, it's just, it's just the tempo. Uh, let's do 78. Is that a good volume for everyone or is that way, way too loud? I'm liking this already. This is pretty cool. I think you can get some pretty cool effects with this. All right, let's say we take just the uh, just the filter. So it can it can completely self oscillate and just hum but around ninety percent seems pretty good. Let's say you just want that sort of sound. You can put that in parallel using the mix control. Maybe distort it a bit. Or of course, you can always maybe put that on a separate track and then um, we'll send into this track and make this 100% wet. And there we've created a bass. Uh, the, I was hearing the delay earlier. I'm not really hearing the delay now. I 
Why am I not hearing the delay? It's pretty fun. I have to say, it's pretty fun. Um, yeah, anything else you want to check this out on? Um, I think it's pretty cool on, on these drums. They're, there's no presets. But um, this is similar to Beef. Kale Madio's Beef plugin. But, or... To me, it feels similar, but it does have different effects. Um, it feels similar to use it, but it is, uh, yeah, lots of different effects in it. Um, Just installed Reaper yesterday, having an issue with the me peak meters lag. Um, so there's there could be a few different things happening. Um, if I were you, I would go through my Fresh Start series first. Um, and then the, uh, probably the What's New in Reaper 7 video. And then if you're still having issues, I would look at things like the, um, let's just search for meter. Uh, where is it? There are options for track meters, and you can try some different things here. So these are my settings. I don't know if they are default. Um... There is also things like in general advanced UI system stuff. These are my settings for an M1 Mac. Um, but I would, I think these are defaults. These two are at least default. This one does make a difference with certain things. This can cause some lag if that's off. Um, but yeah. You know, maybe screenshot that and or come back to this the stream vod and uh, reference that. But definitely go through my first start series first if you are a new user. There's a lot of sort of default settings in Reaper that are not really optimized for efficient workflow. I think.
So what do you think of this BA1 effect strip? I think it's pretty fun. This is uh, this is free if you have the uh, the synth. I think that's a really nice update to release. And you can do a surprising amount with this synth, even though it's su supposed to be like this old, I think, Yamaha. Almost like a toy synth. The built-in effects really makes a big difference. And it's also fun just to hit the, the regen button, the randomize button here a few times. Do I use Vital? No. I never really... Uh, I, I think I've had it installed a few times, but I never really, like, um, liked it, I guess you could say. I've had it more complicated. Um, I have a few other instruments that are sort of similar. Um, I have... Uh, DS Thorn. And I'm pretty sure that this does everything that Vital can do. Because it's got some pretty crazy things. Uh, yeah, Thorn is just incredible. <laughs> I wasn't even playing that time. <laughs> um, what else do I have? Um, yeah, I don't have Vital installed on this computer. Uh, I did have it installed on my PC and probably my MacBook Pro, but currently I don't have that installed. Just the few times that I've checked it out, it's like it didn't really connect with me. I I don't like serum. I don't like pigments. Um, I had another plugin that I don't remember what it was called. Um, what was that called? There's something that's very similar to uh, serum that. Uh, That I can't remember what it was called. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, but something I don't currently have installed. Not face. I do have faceplant. Yeah, faceplant is is great. Uh, what was it? <laughs> I bought it. I used it a little bit, but it just ended up being like too complicated. Um. It's gonna bother me. I'm gonna try try looking it up. Um, look up serum alternative. I know that uh, vital is considered an alternative. It wasn't silent. It was, uh, I can't even remember the company name. Uh, it's killing me. I can't, I can't figure it out. What was that?
Hello, new people. Welcome. Shaper snap in. Uh, let me check if my um, if I'm updated. Hello. I don't have. I don't have the installer installed. <laughs> Don't Google Serum Alternatives. You get some questionable results. Oh, come on. Pigments and Phase Plant and Massive X are definitely sort of like, I would say the most popular ones, but there is something else. I just wish I could figure out what it was called. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I do have the KVR app still open, so I could search for kilohertz. And then maybe it will take me to the download. All right, I'm getting the KVR or Kilohertz installer, and I'm running the installer. I was looking at the chat. You beat me to it, but thank you. Tyrell's good, but it, I wouldn't really say it's uh, an alternative to. Uh, to serum. Maybe it's maybe it's an alternative to vengeance. <sighs> I don't know. Or, or maybe it's called Aven Avenger. I don't know. Let me check audio plugin deals. I may have bought it from there. Um, like it's a fairly popular plugin. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, what do you call it? There's a lot of uh, expansions for it. I think. It's killing me that I don't know what this plugin's called. The plugin's good, I just never really, like, got hooked, but it was cheap. I feel like it starts with an A. It probably doesn't, even. It wasn't UVI. U UVI, I remember. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's so many good plugins... You can't really go wrong with any of them if you just stick with it and learn it. And I, I just never do. I don't like the song. I'm just scrolling. Um, I don't know. What, what would I search for? VSTI receipt? Maybe 
sure that I spelled it right. Um, no. I don't know. Crazy. I hate it. <laughs> I hate that I can't remember it. Um, all right. Is this plugin updated? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to check for this new Kill Hearts plugin. All right, so new plugins. Uh, yeah. So many Kill Hearts plugins. What's this new one? Uh, what's it called? Shaper? I think Shaper. Uh, so it's a wave shaper. Um,. distortion thing right Found the fart setting. So we need to make a short out of that and uh, like speed run timer for finding the fart sound. Um, well, this, this is not right. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of different wave shapes you can load in here, but let's start with some basic ones. Loud. Very loud. Um... Oh, if I didn't mention, this is a new plugin that is free in their uh, Essentials Bundle, something like that, the snap-ins, and there is a paid version of this which allows you to like sweep through the different wave shapes. Um, or Is it wave shapes? Not really wave shapes, but you can sweep through the shapes like a synth, and uh, like you would with a wavetable synth and uh, modulate that and get some really interesting effects. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So there's no preset for a fart sound. Come on. Can't grab the UI scale anymore. I just like the fart sounds. I'm just going to leave it like this, and uh, yeah, sounds much better like this. I'm, uh, let's save this preset as a user preset. Uh, I feel like I'm missing a button when I do that. User. How do I? No. Ah, lost it. All right. Let's remove that. Okay, I have to click here and then file, save as fart. Okay, yeah, I thought I could click here and then save the current settings.
I still don't know what I'm doing with this. Uh, I forget, is it volume? Is it dynamics coming through or is it actually frequency dependent? I can't really tell. Um, all right, so we're basically this and then we'll file save and this will be, um, I like this. Okay. Let's go back to XO. Let's do a let's do a different kit. So there's the original sound and sort of made like a more of like an Atari sound. It, all right, let's do uh let's do <laughs> favorite that so that's always there um let's go back to default let's do one more Okay, um, let me just make sure that I'm on the right website here. Um, let's do... Okay, uh, so it's a digital wave shaper and yeah, remapping the audio. <laughs> I need more information. What does remapping mean? Um, so it's a it's a shaper, a wave shaper with minimal aliasing, and but it it's you know definitely lots of distortion. I don't really understand the graph. So like you make it nonlinear, but like, what does it mean when it's at the bottom? What does it mean when it's at the top? What does it mean when it's in the middle? Is this volume? Is this frequency? I don't really understand it. Let's just do it randomly, but... Mm 
That's pretty harsh. Okay. Um maybe we just need a different drum loop. So I wish I had more like loops in here. I do like this beat. That's perfect. Have you guys seen the Pi? Um, What's it called? Pi. I guess it's just called Pi. It's like the radial menu, but it's like an update. Um, and it it uh it looks pretty cool. Um, so I've got that assigned to the to a key. If I bring this up, this little thing pops up. And so I can freeze, I can unfreeze, I can move to sub project. That's the only I've only added a few things. Uh, insert virtual instrument a new track. So um, I did kind of want to do a like a showcase of this, but if you know radial menu, which I don't remember, not Alt R. Shift E is what I've got radial menu set to. It looks like this, and you hover over these things or click on them, and you you get to, there's it's just like a, a weapon wheel menu, right? Um, and it's highly configurable, but this Pi menu is um, context sensitive. So like depending on where where you hover over, empty TCP tracks mixer. Um, Items, audio items, MIDI items, a range view. Uh, probably not transport. Oh, transport looks a little funny. But there, there is a menu there for transport. Maybe it doesn't expect that uh, I would dock my transport this way. But yeah, uh, but it doesn't come with a, sort of a, a default preset. So this is made by the, uh, the user Sexton. It was made a ton of really amazing scripts. Uh, and so you could do setup and you get this menu. So Pi is like uh, the UI. 
for it. So we've got a range, range empty, TCP, TCP empty, MCP, all these different areas um, where you can call up this menu. And it'll always be the same shortcut to call up that menu. And then you can add things from the action list to to there. So let's you can just drag it in and you get that as a, a new point in the menu. I don't think you can like rearrange them specifically. Um, but in addition to that, you can add an icon to these or import an image, which goes to the uh, the uh, toolbar icons, um, or clear it, or set a color. So yeah, there's quite a lot you can do with that. If you want to remove an action, you can click the X here. Um, and you can also assign a key. So you could press, um, I don't know. If you it depends on where you you start your where you put your starting point. So like maybe if you hold F, and then you can reach one two three, uh, and that can be your first three kind of shortcuts. So without having to move the mouse and click on on the thing, you can do that. Uh, if I want to remove this, I don't know. Maybe I can't. I can disarm the action, but I don't know how to actually remove the function at all. Um, yeah, I'm pretty new to this. I only like spent like, I don't know, 40 seconds or something trying to figure out how to uh, add something, how to add menus and things like that. But it looks like there's a menu editor and you can have a sub menu sort of pop up here. Let's Let's just edit this menu. Let's put in some random parameters. I'm just grabbing anything just to see what that looks like. Arrange. All right. So arrange view. Apply. Arrange view. And then click this. And then there's different sort of sub menus. Interesting. So if you are already using um, radial menu and you're looking for something that's more current, more up to date, maybe different appearance, something that's a little more customizable, then maybe switch over to this. Or if you never got into radial menu, you missed that one, uh, this is one to check out. So uh, Sexton has done many great scripts. Um, he did Paramo Paranormal Effects Router. He did the uh, re-spaghetti as well. Sexton does some amazing things. Uh, open. Uh, where's the play button? Run. Like, this is a Reaper script. It. <laughs> you should be able to do that with Rescript. Um. So he's he's clearly on a another level of uh of scripting. Uh, I did see something that was more like um, uh, more like Wolfenstein in here, but I don't know if that is included in the uh, the examples. Or maybe just don't the know the name of it. Yeah, there's lots of plugins that have mini games. Uh, UVI has some plugins you can download that are games, but also they make sounds. Made Max for Live inside of Reaper? Yeah, kind of. 
He makes some really amazing stuff. Uh, yeah, Locusana made the radial menu. Okay, going back to Shaper, input amplitude is x-axis, output amplitude is y-axis. Straight line across would just be a DC output. Okay. So it's not frequency dependent, just sort of like, just volume. Yeah, Locusana is not using Reaper anymore. Um, there's a lot of people that have left, just completely stopped making music and stuff. Did Sexton make Area 51? Uh, yeah, I think so. But, um... I don't know if I ha actually have that installed, um, but uh, th that sort of ended up being Razor edits anyways. I think everything from that basically ended up working with uh, Razor edits. Okay. Um, yeah, I would... I'd kind of like to spend some time configuring Pi Menu, but I actually <laughs> don't want to at the same time. Um, there is another script I'd want to check out called One Small Step. And we might actually need to come back to this one if it's too complicated. But it is a step in input action. Yeah, I'll probably need to come back to this one. But it's an alternative to step input. And uh, I honestly have no idea how it works. But yeah, um, that's um, maybe in another time. I, I can't go into that one completely blind. I can maybe get. Uh, links to that um pi menu yeah so i'll put a link to pi menu in the in the chat but yeah you can make a pretty nice looking menu with this the shortcuts there's you know there's there's quite a bit of work that goes into actually setting something up, but if you know exactly what you want, it should be, you know, should be a pretty good time to make that. Um... Should we do some more questions, if there's any more questions? Uh, it is 11.30 here, so I'm getting pretty hungry. As I said, I'm back on the uh, intermittent fasting thing, so I'm already uh, malnourished. <laughs> Aunt Rave, go ahead with your question. What other DAW have you used last? I was in FL Studio a little bit this week. Because um, I still have a license for it. I bought that in... I bought Producer Edition in uh, 2006, I think. Um, but I've barely used it since then. Uh, and... Yeah, it's it's uh it's very different now than it was back then. But you know, it, it's good software. Um but in the past I've used Ableton, Reason, Cubase, 
logic, mm, sonar. I use Studio One. I didn't. I don't think I ever completed a project in Studio One, but I tried it at version one, and it was decent. I didn't hate it immediately or anything. I don't like that there are that it's in tiers like uh, so many other DAWs. Reaper's kind of the exception to to that. Audacity is what I made about half of my first sample library in um, before I got Pro Tools, and I'm like, oh wow, there's there's like bulk editing I can do and stuff, batch exporting things like. That. I was doing it so slow, one sample at a time. Yeah, I've never tried the Reason Rack with Reaper. That was uh, way after my time with with Reason. Uh, we used Reason in in college um, for you know, just as an alternative to using MIDI and Pro Tools. We used Cubase or Logic, and um, anyone that bought Pro Tools at that time was getting Reason as well as a plugin. Is there a way to add a solo button to an effects window? Spend a chunk of time messing with a plugin to find out it's on the wrong track. Uh, I don't know if I can <laughs> uh, help you with that exactly, but I showed this earlier in the stream. Um, I use the shortcut shift s to solo the selected track and i have it as a global action so if this is if this is in focus i can still solo that track hopefully you can see that um and that action is me Too beats toggle exclusive solo for selected tracks and then when you assign your key Go to scope global. All right, so yeah, we're actually gonna we're gonna stop here, I think, and um, yeah. I got to eat. Got to feed my kids. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on the stream today. I had fun. I hope you did as well. Um, if you haven't seen the newest video published last night, uh, please check that out. And uh, we'll do this again last Friday of of the month, I think. I think we had a good turnout uh, today. More than usual. Uh, yeah, last question. Just like how you can find links to Repack and SWS, do you th think Reaper devs should link to free sample packs and instruments on the website? Like, uh, uh, I don't know. I think it's just a Google search away. Most people can do that. I don't know. And there's a bunch linked in the, uh, the videos. Kenny's got a bunch of videos on using Reaper with free plugins and stuff like that. I was going to make some sort of like free resource pack for Reaper 7. Timing didn't work out. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. There's so many options. It's like infinite. Um, I, I, the Reaper not coming w with samples and instruments is like one of its strengths is also one of its weaknesses and like if you look at other DAWs like they have like these big bloated installers because it's because they come with like all these plugins and instruments that people don't use and like they've just been there since whatever 2000 so i don't know like a community pack of of a bunch of samples that's cool uh we could do that on our discord of course um I think there's there's just endless options for those things. I don't know. Everyone's got the preference of what they like for uh, samples and instruments and things. I don't know. 
I try not to download everything that's available anymore, but I used to. I've been carrying around some samples since 2004, I think, probably. Maybe even earlier than that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I've got a hard drive full of samples that are super, super old. Or even my current hard drive might have some. Anyways, that's it for this video. Um, hopefully I can actually edit this into some additional content, but maybe not. Hope you have a good day. See you later. Where's that button? I can never find that button.